In the last video, we finished talking about the latest features in Elasticsearch to assist you with the hot, warm, cold architecture. Specifically, we talked about data roles and data tiers, and I also used the migrate action over the allocate action. So those were all new features uh, or some of the latest features in Elasticsearch. In these first three videos, I made zero assumptions on the kind of data you could be storing in your Elasticsearch indices. You could be storing anonymized customer information, or maybe you're storing anonymized patient information for medical research purposes, or really anything else. But for many of us who work as systems administrators or security analysts, we often use the Elastic Stack to ingest logs and time-stamped events to observe the health of our technology infrastructure and other technology services that we are offering. And to help us with that, the Elasticsearch team has formalized the concept of data streams to make it even easier to create indices for logs and time-stamped data. This in turn automates many of the other things that we've seen in the first three videos. So let me actually pull up the documentation for data streams. And maybe I'll just read the official definition that the Elasticsearch team gives us. A data stream lets you store append-only time series data across multiple indices while giving you a single named resource for requests. Data streams are well suited for logs, events, metrics, and other continuously generated data. You can submit indexing and search requests directly to a data stream. The stream automatically routes the request to backing indices that stores the stream's data. You can use index lifecycle management to automate the management of these backing indices. For example, you can use ILM to automatically move older backing indices to less expensive hardware and delete unneeded indices. ILM can help, re uh, help you reduce costs and overhead as your data grows. So you can see that just by this definition, it was describing everything we've done in these first three videos, except in these first three videos, I didn't explicitly uh, uh, let's, uh, force us to work with time series data. I just assumed your data can be anything, but many of the things that we're doing manually or allocating shards, uh, doing things like rollover and setting up aliases, data streams basically does all that out of the box for you. And there's a diagram here where it shows if you create a data stream, automatically the rollovers and uh, are happening and your data stream is, uh, to reference your data stream, you're basically using an alias. Uh, and all these backing indices, so these indices that are automatically created on rollover, that's what we call the backing indices. Those are automatically managed by the, uh, by the life uh, index lifecycle management policies. Uh, let's continue reading here. Should you use a data stream to determine whether you should use a data stream or not? Uh, you just got to consider the format of the data. And here are some good candidates. Uh, your data contains a timestamp field. So I know in the first three videos we did, I included a timestamp field, but I didn't have to. Uh, we could have done everything without a timestamp field. But if you know you're consuming log data, uh, click events from user actions a certain way, as long as there's a timestamp, that's a good consideration for data stream. Uh, you mostly perform indexing requests with occasional updates and deletes. Okay, I feel like this statement isn't worded that nicely, uh, but they do write it all the way at the bottom down here, which I really think they should have promoted this paragraph to the top. Basically, if your data is mostly append only, then you're probably very interested in using a data stream over a traditional index like we've been doing in the, la uh, in the first three videos. And let's see, what's the final term here? Your index documents with, uh, uh, without an underscore ID or when indexing documents with an explicit underscore ID, you first inspect write wins behavior. Uh, so basically, you prefer to let Elasticsearch manage uh, the indexing and IDs and, uh, and all that stuff. So I would say when you're working with logs and event, uh, event and metric type of data, when, when you have timestamps, you're pretty much thinking about data streams. Okay, let me see if there's anything else interesting in this 
uh, documentation I should raise. Okay, so this is just saying that when uh, these backing indices are made, it's automatically going to follow this format. And I have the documentation for setting up a specific data stream here uh, opened up. You can read this through if you want, but in this video, I'm going to simplify uh, a lot of things here uh, just so we can get started. So let me think if there's anything else I need to review before we actually start working with data streams. Actually, I can't think of anything else. I think the best way to explain data streams is to do the actual demonstration. So I'm going to go back to my Kibana instance. And to start working with data streams, well, actually, before we do that, let me just make sure my cluster is still up and running. Okay, everything is still configured based upon the video, or our most recent video. So uh, yeah, let's start working with data streams. Uh, before we set up the data stream, let's create the policy. And I already have it pasted in here. This policy is exactly the same as our last video. So when you're working with data streams, in terms of the policy, there's really no difference between what we did in this video and uh, our current video. Okay, so I won't, uh, there's nothing really to explain about this policy, right? It stays the same. All right, so then the, what's the next thing we do? Uh, next thing we need to do is define an index template. So let me make some space. This stuff is all from our last video. Oh, let me actually set up the policy first. Click on this. Okay, policy has been made. So next, just like our previous video, we need to set up an index template. So let me grab that from my other computer screen. Uh, this one here, copy and paste. All right, so this index template looks almost the same as our last video. Uh, when you're setting up a data stream, it's even simpler than the template from our last video. Uh, the first thing, well actually I should mention the additions. Uh, the first addition is I put in a new attribute here called data stream, just to let Elasticsearch know that this template is only used for data streams. Field mappings, I keep it exactly the same as the last one. Uh, make sure you have a timestamp, right? So I've already included in the previous videos, which you didn't need to if you're in the previous videos, if we're not working with time series data, we wouldn't have needed this field. Uh, but since we're working with data streams here, we need this field. Then the settings is almost the same as our last video. Let's compare. This is our last video. And when we look at our index template, there are five lines here and there are three lines here. So what I did was I deleted this line because with the data streams, new backing indices are automatically put on the hot tier and the backing indices will automatically propagate through the phases based on the schedule in our ILM policy. So we don't need this line, okay? The second thing is I deleted the alias. So we don't need to explicitly define an alias for our data stream. We can call our data stream whatever we want as long as it matches this index pattern up here. And from that point on, Elasticsearch will automatically generate backing indices that are associated with the name of our data stream. So let me create this template. So this error is saying that, uh, oh, I forgot to tear down the template from the previous video. Sorry, my video just crashed, but basically I deleted the previous template by running this command over here. Okay, so now to create our data stream, we don't actually have to uh, create the data stream. We just insert a data stream into this alias and it will everything will just happen behind the scenes. So I've already pasted the command here. So we are gonna create a new document to the demo data stream, insert. All right, and just like that, uh, everything uh, should be mapped, uh, should be using this template. So let's take a look at uh, get ILM uh, policy. Oh, I keep forgetting. Maybe it's like this. And then we type demo. 
There we go. So you can see that this demo alias already is associated with this index, dot ds demo, uh, and that's the timestamp. It's currently in the hot phase. So if I do a get cat shards on just this index, let's see what happens. We can see that it's on node one, which is our hot node. Okay, let's insert a few more documents. And let's do a search. And this time I'll just say size is going to be uh, 20, uh, 1000, just so that we have this filter uh, returning a 1000 results. Even though we only have two, it's just for later on. Okay, so we can see that this is already being written uh, to these uh, to this index. So I'll just press pause and let some of these indices migrate through the phases. It has been a few minutes, and you can see that with this data stream, uh, the original backing index uh, number one is already on the warm phase, and a new one has been made just recently. Okay, it's been a few more minutes and I can see that the first index, demo one, already scheduled for deletion. Again, I guess I didn't capture, uh, I didn't press record in time to see it in the cold phase. So that's basically it. I think I've covered everything I want to cover for the index lifecycle management, hot, warm, cold architecture, and just understanding how shard allocation works. If I've made any mistakes, I'll post some follow-up videos straight to this playlist on our index lifecycle management.